Hello there. We are here taking a look at Passport, and our last walkthrough video ended with wiring up our Passport local strategy, and we got it working. The next thing we talked about is how from here, because this you know, this endpoint's doing its sole job, which is taking the payload information, the rec user, making a token out of it, building its payload, and sending it as a response like it used to. And we're actually done here. What I have to do next, however, is fix my pizza endpoint because this thing is a hot mess of code that we can make so, so, so much better. So how do we do that? Let's go check it out. So I'm going to get rid of all this information because that's gonna be moved away out of this router endpoint, thankfully meaning these two can now go away. What's gonna happen now is instead of email, we're gonna send rec.user.email, just like that serialized user information we got from before. Ah, that tells us that this endpoint also needs to know that interface we made in the last video, which is why I chose to export it. So I'll say, I want this one to also use rec user. So you could leave it in the login file if you wanted to, but we're gonna be using it in multiple places. So maybe I'll make it a utility or maybe I'll make it a types folder. I'll make it outside of utils. I don't know why I moved it into utils. But in the types folder, I might for now just make an index.ts file that does that little interface for me. So I'll go to that index file I just made. Don't have to do this, but this makes it so I have a single source of truth that has a path that makes sense. So I'm going to go ahead and do that like so. There we go. And then from there, I have to simply import it here with a quick fix, import it, and then there we go. We now have that rec user being imported here. We can come over here and fix the same rec user import. I'm going to delete it and simply click on quick fix, quick fix and let it fix that import statement. Now they both reference this types index file and not having to import it from weird path names all over the place. That's Pretty cool information to know how to do. Something else we can take into consideration is, technically this has more than just ID and email on it, doesn't it? Technically it has everything I selected from my database. So if we go over to a uh, example of that, like what happens when I do select one user? It sends the ID, the email, the registration date, and their password. Oh no, so does that technically mean the password is a thing here as well? as is the created at property? Yes, it is. As a matter of fact, if you look at this type right here, it probably can, you can probably tell that this is a model type I made for my users table. So I could absolutely import this users table in place of writing these by hand and simply say, it should have a type of users table available on it. So I can test that by coming to this router, typing rec.user dot and voila, it has those properties coded for me. But here's another question. Should we really allow password as something that's available out here to even, to even accidentally use? Oh, hell no, nah. hell no. Nah. So what we're gonna do is actually gonna head back to our strategies file. And before we call done null user found, you can write delete user found dot password like that. And that way it'll delete the password from user found before we accidentally send the password any further than when it should go. We don't wanna even accidentally chain, daisy chain that password one step further than when we're done with it. Once I'm done with user found password, blow that thing up. I can't have it on there. That's bad, 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 bad practice. But if you have four or five strategies, you'll have to repeat this code and remember to repeat that code over and over and over again. But what's cool and something I found out recently is we can come up to our serialized user function and say, when the time comes, delete user.password, call done null user. And that way, every single strategy that creates a rec.user now will make sure to delete the password before it allows to go one step further. And we can even do a daisy chain to say, make sure it's an optional property, make sure, uh, well, you know, make sure user password has a value. And if it does, then do that particular step or something like that. We can say, let's do it with a condition rather than something shorthand. If user.password has a value on it, then delete user.password because we don't we don't want it there if it's there. But otherwise we don't want to interrupt our workflow as is. Now it's fussing us because it doesn't know what the user is, but remember it's gonna be whatever our users table happens to select from there. So we can also bring in that type right there as well. And there you go. That's how you can make it so it knows what user is and has some strong typing for TypeScript as well. So that's good to know, very good to know. Okay then, now, what I was trying to do before I got sidetracked was talk about how we can authenticate using a new strategy here. The purpose of this video, which is the 
Passport JWT strategy. Okay, so what we're gonna do is stop our servers, npm install passport-jwt and the typings for passport dash jwt because remember from the last video or the beginning of this video i'm losing my mind i can't remember what i did anymore but somewhere in those last two videos or this one we deleted this code here with all my conditional checks because we said that passport jwt is going to handle all that stuff for us so now that it's installed i'm going to get my server back up and running before i forget for the millionth time in this walkthrough series this walkthrough series there we go uh, i'm going to now go back to my strategies file and code up the new one. So we're gonna say import asterisk as passport JWT from passport dash JWT like that. And it's a new strategy. So we're gonna to have to above or below this one, add a new one. Say passport is also going to use the following strategy, a new passport.local strategy, run that constructor function, same thing, options object, callback function. And because we're gonna be keeping this truly stateless, this callback is not going to be doing a database lookup like this one is. It's simply going to run its code because if we get the token, it exists and it validates our secret signature and it's not expired, we're going to trust it. And that is how JWT is meant to be used, a truly stateless implementation. But remember, that comes with its own up and downsides. I'm still going to Provide, no, not document, what happened? Oh, because here's the arguments, right? You get the payload and you get something called done, like that. And remember, we hadn't write, written what a payload is yet, so at the moment, if I'm not mistaken, we can make a type for it, check it out. We can just say, interface our payload. Hey, wait a minute, we have another interface that might be used in several locations. So how about I take it to my types index and also export it from here for now. So this is kind of like, until my project gets bigger and bigger, this one file will kind of act as the sole possibility for this particular uh, for my this particular project. It'll be the sole source of truth for a lot of my interfaces that are being shared across my project. So this payload will have uh, whatever I made on it in my create token. So back in my login, this will be a good use case of also moving this to its own file. But the payload looked like this. I'm just gonna copy it and paste it over here like that. We're gonna new line everything and say, yeah, okay, so this is gonna be a number when we build our payload. This is gonna be an email that'll have a string on it. This role should be a number as well. And that will be my payload information right there, thankfully. So we got that going on back over here. This payload type we can say will be a payload interface from my types declaration file. So there we go. We got payload imported in now and now that's good to go. Now it's really fussing at me because we need to fill out this options object. First off, passport strategy or passport, passport local. Hold on now. Typo, typo, typo. There we go. Passport JWT. We'll fix that in a minute. Passport JWT needs to have a logic of where to find the JSON web token. Because remember, we can put it in the body, query parameters, a route parameter, uh, somewhere in the headers, or in our case, the bearer token scheme. So the JWT from request needs to be a function that tells it where to extract it from. Do we have to write that ourselves? Thankfully, we don't. Passport JWT has that coded on its for us as something called the extraction object. The extraction object has the following functions. These are all the most common places you can find tokens, especially JWT tokens. So we're doing bearer tokens. We're going to pick that function and say, find that token. That's going to automate that process of those conditions we wrote of looking for the key of authorization, making sure it has a value of bearer token, making sure the first word is bearer with a capital B and making sure that second value after the word B is an actual token. All that's handled for us. The next thing it needs to know is, is the token matching our signature? So we have to provide it our secret key. So that comes from our config. Did it auto import the right thing? Import, nope. Make sure when you use auto import from TypeScript, it's importing what you think it's importing. So not that one. It's import config from up one into the config folder like so. That's what we care about. So scrolling back on down. Uh, Config.jwt.secret. And that's will encompass the jwt.verify our function in our pizza endpoint used to do. It's gonna verify the token for us. 
So all I have to do is say, if it gets this far, just call done with no error and serialize that payload, which you might be thinking, hold on, Luke, you said that the user is always going to be user found. And in this case, it's payload. And so this is where you'd have to get kind of creative and say, these are sometimes going to be some combined types because it's going to have those possible values on there. Uh, maybe it's parentheses to make it done like that. Uh, Yeah. All right. So hold on. I'll have to remember how to do the typing for it there. But that part won't actually matter since we don't have, because that's why I ran this conditional check here to make sure if the password wasn't there, it didn't error out if that happened to be the payload. But now our rec user might have the wrong information on it because our rec user, if you notice here, has just the properties from our table and doesn't have the properties from the payload. Now the payload and the rec user properties do kind of coincide like the payload had an ID, but the payload had something called user ID rather than ID. And the payload had IAT and EXP and things like that. So if I want to do some TypeScript magic for that, what we'd have to do is say it could be the user's table or it could be that payload that we just made right down there as well. And of course, I'm sure that's going to throw errors elsewhere. Yeah, because we're not checking for which condition it is here. So we have to do a type guard. So we have to say if, I think it's like this. I'll have to say import payload like that. And of course I hate doing any's, but we might have to end up doing that at some point down here as well. So if not token, if, uh, if rec.user I think is what we need to do. Mm. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Bear with me, y'all. Bear with me. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. hold on. I hate do. I really, really hate doing this. And we're just for the sake of time, because I have a meeting coming up in just a minute. I'm gonna simply tell TS to ignore this little tidbit here. This is an awful, awful, awful solution. But my brain is a little bit racked because I'm running out of time. So we're gonna leave that down there. Hold on. I got one more thing I can try to say it's not a union, but rather it's the combination of the two types. So we don't really care which one it is. But now, of course, that ends up freaking out because it's not expecting two possible types on that particular item right there. So again, for now, we're going to leave it as the union type and we need to provide a type guard to know to tell TS when it's going to be dot ID and when it's going to be dot user ID, for example. So for local, it needs to be ID and elsewhere it needs to be user ID. So for now, that's our temporary solution. I hate it. But again, interest of time. Just throw that on there for now. It's good to know that we can tell TS to ignore a certain line. Anyway, we're done with this thing, by the way, y'all. So all we have to do now is come over here, import that authenticate middleware from Passport, like so. Place it as a middleware on this endpoint or any endpoint y'all want to protect. That's the beauty of it. Any endpoint y'all want to protect is now good to go and check it out. That's what our endpoint code looks like now because we've moved everything out to this passport strategies file, which means, is this token valid? It should be, so enjoy your pizza time test at test.com. Let's break the token by one letter. We got unauthorized, that default response that came from passport. Let's add the Q back or undo our change by hitting control or command Z. It lets us back in. If I have no token, we get unauthorized. All that automated error handling is done for us, which again, I don't like, but it's done for us. But there you go. Look how much cleaner our endpoints do look. This looks much cleaner, as does our login, once we got the logic of the authentication and authorization out of the individual endpoints and into their own encapsulated strategies over here, right? We've kind of moved that logic into their own places. And when we want to protect an endpoint, it is literally as easy as adding this right before your callback, making sure you have rec user available and you're good to go, right? And so rec.user will represent anywhere in your endpoints who claims to be making this request. Remember that rec.user.userid or rec.user.id are going to be your best friends. And that's the magic of how all this is pieced together with Passport. One final thought before I continue on in this walkthrough and talk about how to fix that TypeScript error in the next video with any luck. I'm going to show you all something cool you can take into consideration. I'm going to head to the strategies file because again, this looks kind of goofy that just says run this file and that's not very testable. How are you supposed to test a file running as a side effect? It's just a cool TypeScript thing to know. 
I'm gonna come over here to this file, my passport strategies file. I'm gonna import something specific from Express. From Express. And the thing we're gonna import is something called the application interface. It is the interface that represents an Express app, is what we create right here, basically. If you mouse over app, well, it says Express. That's confusing. I thought it would be application and not Express. We're gonna find out one way or the other. So, since that returns an Express application, watch this. I can make this a function called configure passport that takes our app as an argument called application like that. I'm gonna take all of my passport code and cut it and paste it into this one function now. So what do you think that's gonna do for us, right? Well, next thing I need to do also is take this app use passport initialize and cut it. Come back to my strategies file. I'm gonna paste that at the bottom of all this code here. There's our app.use. You can tell if we write app dot, it knows what use and get and all those things are. Has TypeScript knows what app is because we strong typed it as an express application right here, which means I can come back to my server. Instead of having to write this weird looking import statement, I can actually make it something meaningful and say import configure passport from that strategies file, get rid of this generic passport import, take this configure passport function, call it and pass my app here into this function. So over here, it gets fed in right here, gets wired up the way it needs to, gets initialized, and our server looks that much cleaner for it. This is also way more modular and testable if you get into unit testing than what we had a moment ago. This will make it so I can test my configure passport function and actually have it be easy to test and probably run faster since it's just a function. So another way of organizing your code that I think is a strong way to do so. That'll about wrap it up for the implementation of the strategies. The next couple of videos, we'll talk about additional features, writing our own custom middlewares that utilize these things and fixing my TypeScript typings to make a bit more sense since I did them kind of on the fly. So see y'all in those next videos.